Why do our lives feel harder than we believe they're supposed to feel? Why do we have these deep callings towards something beautiful, magical, meaningful in our lives? And then why does it seem so hard to reach? Why does it seem like it never comes to us even when we know somewhere deep inside it's what we're meant for? If it's our sole purpose, if it's what we're meant for, then shouldn't it feel easier? Shouldn't it be easier to call it in, to manifest it, to have the things we feel so deeply down to our bones drawn to? The answer is yes. And after 37 years of trying to just do things right, take the right steps, follow the path I thought would eventually bring me what I knew I was meant for, and it not working at all, I had a sudden spiritual awakening. And then I knew why it hasn't been working the way we've been doing things. The reason why is exactly what I talk about in this podcast and exactly what I teach my clients how to find. Ancient alchemy, cosmic wisdom, and real world teachings for women who know they're meant for so much more. I'm Heather Allison, and this is The Golden Path. Welcome home. Hey loves, I'm Heather Allison, your host for The Golden Path, alchemy for women who know they're meant for more. And I'm going to be dropping in here with you to bring more insights about these invisible energies that create and influence every pattern in our lives and how you can actually work with them so you don't have to keep working against them. Uh, Every month on this show, I'm going to be sharing a facet of my archetypal energy work with you, my energy repatterning work which means I'm going to be helping you tap into some really ancient ideas, really high level energies that exist within you that you've never actually been given permission to know. And I'll be inviting you to remember this part of yourself so that you can tap into and start to receive exactly what you're meant for. And when you remember and start to reactivate these ancient energies, these ancient parts of you, you start to remember that you're meant for a lot more than what you've been settling for, that you were literally built for more. You have a blueprint that was built for more, that you're capable of so much more than you think, and that there's actually a reason why it's felt a lot harder than it's supposed to. And you've probably already felt that somewhat in your life because I think most of us do. Most of us feel somewhere deep inside that it's not supposed to be as hard as it has been. Um, you know, those, those deeply held desires that we have, the ones that we can literally, literally feel down to our toes, down to our bones, down to our bellies and our soul. It doesn't seem to line up with how much we struggle to fulfill those things, right? Like why we go most of our lives feeling like we're settling for something less than our soul knows we were meant for. It doesn't seem like it should be that way, right? Like I'm sure you feel that because I know I have felt that. And that's exactly what this work is about because it's been my experience that it's not supposed to be as hard as it's been. And working with these higher level energies, these archetypes has really allowed me and my clients to create massive shifts and up levels in our lives, in our relationships and how we feel in our access to our intuition and in our businesses and our prosperity. Everything shifts, like all of those places, everything shifts because when we change the energy of the foundation of our lives, these energies that literally everything else is built on, everything else about our lives changes too. And everything we put on those foundations changes as well. And it feels better and it feels easier. It's like this kind of like great big zipper, if you can imagine that, like creating shifts at this highest level. And literally everything just starts to kind of come together in alignment the way it's supposed to below it. And this is really the gist of what I mean by your golden path. When you align these uppermost energies, you step a lot more easily onto what I call the highest version of your life. You step into the highest version of your destiny, if you will. The energies of what you're meant for, what you came here for, start to kind of orchestrate themselves into the stepping stones that you've been looking for all along. And so today on the golden path, we're going to be talking about how that works for you goddesspreneurs out there, what I call you goddesspreneurs, those of you who are entrepreneurs, business owners, service providers, whether that's a yoga teacher or hairstylist or whatever, um, marketers, salespeople, all of you folk. (laughs) And, And now these principles also definitely apply to people who 
work, like have a job, everybody who needs to make money, which is literally all of us. And I will say that these energies are especially potent for those of you who are in the business of selling or marketing or offering yourself your own products, your own services. So if that's you, there's going to be some great information for you today. Because today we're going to be talking about how these archetypes and these high level energies actually help you either find more ease in your business and in your life in general, or feel more struggle and more push and more exhaustion and obligation and constant doing, or how they help you either feel more aligned with your soul purpose or feel farther away from it how they help you either open to more abundance and flow of money energy or how they create the energy of more scarcity and need and fear. So those archetypes I'm talking about, if you have listened to earlier episodes and I highly recommend you go back and listen to the other three episodes if you haven't already, by the way, um, the archetypes are energy patterns. They exist in every single one of us as well as around every single one of us in the world, in the universe, in our relationships, in how people relate to us, even how people and energy feel either drawn to or repelled by us. And that doesn't matter who you are, how you were raised, what culture or religion you were raised with. These are literally innate to the entire world and how the world works and how reality works and how energy in general works and us as humans. And more specifically, I'm talking about the divine or sacred feminine and masculine archetypes. So some of you might be familiar with the idea of like goddess archetypes or feminine archetypes, things like, you know, general archetypes of like mother and maiden and crone, um, or even more specific personas of archetypes like feminine or goddess archetypes like Aphrodite or Hathor or Freya. And that's not really what we're talking about here. These are very rich aspects of the divine feminine. They're, they're more specific and specialized facets of the divine feminine, these, these goddesses, the mother, maiden, crone, or Aphrodite, etc. But in this work that I do, and these principles that I'm sharing with you in this podcast, we're really actually talking about the divine feminine as a whole, or the sacred feminine and masculine as a whole. We're dealing with the highest levels of these archetypes the energy pattern at its very core before it kind of breaks down into further specific packages, if you will, rather than the specifics of these like more detailed energy patterns or personas. And why that's important is that when we start to understand and align with the sacred archetypes at their highest level, at that, the pattern at its very core in the, in the highest form, all of the other lower forms of the energy patterns start to align. They start to shift into place. They all become more and more and more aligned themselves. Again, you can think of this as like a zipper. We're starting at the very top and everything below that now gets to more easily kind of fall into place. Like I know you've zipped a zipper before where those little teeth aren't lined up the way they're supposed to be. And there's that weird like gap that happens and the zipper goes all wonky and it's even harder to get it like unzipped again anyway. But like, or like, um, this is probably even better, but like, and this is actually something I'm feeling quite a lot in my own life right now, where one part of your body is kind of out of alignment, say like one part of your spine and how it throws the entire rest of your body off like your posture and then your neck starts hurting and then your jaw and your bite get out of alignment and the way you walk starts getting kind of funky <laughs> like, or like, and, and how good you feel in general starts to be impacted. All of your body systems and organs and everything like starts to uh, uh, function differently or, or less effectively when your spine is out of alignment. And, and conversely, when your spine is in alignment or when your body is in alignment, everything really just starts to work a little better, right? And feel a little better. Well, this is basically the gist of what I do in this work. When we align your energy patterns with the highest level of these archetypes, everything else starts to fall into place and starts to feel easier and starts to become more and more aligned. And what happens in your business as an entrepreneur is that all parts of the systems of your business start to align and flow and move more easily. They start to thrive more easily. And now, like I said, this is going to apply to you whether you have a job and work for somebody else's company or run your own business, but you will probably 
notice that I'm primarily speaking about this work in terms of entrepreneurial uh, efforts out there and entrepreneurs out there because I offer a course specifically for entrepreneurs called Goddesspreneur. Um, and honestly, if you don't have your systems aligned as an entrepreneur, it is so hard <laughs> to make anything happen. And it's so hard to find joy in your work, let alone flow and success that feels good. But if that doesn't apply to you, if you're not an entrepreneur, then my invitation to you is just to let yourself receive the content today and just see if you can shift the lens a little bit to apply it to your own life, um, your own relationship with money, your own relationship with your self-worth, other ways that your soul purpose has shown up for you. So as I've mentioned in earlier episodes, Here's why these archetypes are out of alignment and why it's such an epidemic. For thousands and thousands of years, we humans, men and women in all walks of life, like I said, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, we've all been operating in what I call a wounded archetypal pattern. And in essence, what happened is that somewhere along the lines, thousands of years ago, somebody decided it was a great idea that it was better if we operated in the masculine archetype, and that the feminine archetype was no good, that it was weak or less appropriate, or that even if it was th- that it was shameful or wicked or something like that. So, and because that apparently caught on or was taught so consistently or by, was taught and decided upon by people in power, it put us in this wounded archetypal state. And what I mean by that is, We've only been operating primarily from the masculine energy patterns and have had the feminine energy patterns in us suppressed. They're no longer in balance, these two archetypes. And because they have have not been in balance for, for thousands of years, and I'm sure even just like looking around or even just thinking about the state of the world that we're in right now, you can see how badly wounded we are, right? We've spun so far out of archetypal and energetic alignment and energetic balance that we're literally creating more pain and suffering with pretty much everything we do. Every thought we have, every word we say, every single action we take, we're mostly creating more pain and suffering. And I know that sounds kind of like doomsday or hopeless, but it's not. Because the thing is we are built for these sacred archetypes for the actual energetic balance that we were meant to carry. It's our it's our energetic blueprint. And It's the one that we get to come back to. And we get to come back to it pretty easily once we just let ourselves start to remember what it feels like to embody it. So last time we talked about how that creates a lot more intimacy and connection and attraction and easy communication and passion and pleasure in our love lives instead of, you know, the struggling relationships or the relationships that fall apart or, or the love lives that just aren't going anywhere. And in business... Tapping back into that energetic balance and embodying the sacred archetypes creates the kind of success that we all wish for. Feeling really deeply aligned with the work that we're doing, right? Feeling like you're doing the work your soul came here to do. Feeling so much more joy in talking about your work or feeling like it's easier to talk about your work and express what we do and sharing it with the world and showing up in our gifts and offering it to the world. Attracting Clients and customers that feel good and with the kind of magnetism that feels effortless. Opening up the channels of abundance and money uh, for money to flow and abundance to come in. Being soul guided on our work and in our business so we're not like guessing at our next steps or having this uncertainty about what we're supposed to be doing and what's right for us in our business. So if you're finding yourself struggling in your business, not sure how to talk about what you do, not sure how to call in clients or customers or more income, not sure why the things you're trying, no matter what you try, just don't seem to be working or feeling exhausted or frustrated or just uncertain, or maybe even feeling like you know you're supposed to be doing something bigger or something better with your life and your work, uh, knowing that you have a big, beautiful purpose, knowing there's something more out there calling you, this episode is for you. So hang out for a few minutes while we take just a quick break. And we'll be back here live on The Golden Path to dive in how these archetypes support your greatest success. I'm Heather Ellison. Stay with me. And we'll be right back. Well, 
welcome back, loves, to The Golden Path with Heather Allison. And we are about to continue talking about success today and how in order to have the kind of soulful success and abundance and ease and flow in our businesses and our soul work, as well as the kind of magnetism to attract in the clients and the customers and the money that we want, we have to have our archetypal energies aligned and be in touch with our sacred feminine and sacred masculine energy patterns. I've talked about these archetypes in more depth in previous episodes on this show. So you might want to have a listen to those as well if you feel called to kind of dive in a little bit deeper and understand them a little bit more. But I'm going to be giving you kind of a high level understanding of them here today as far as they impact our business. We're going to be talking about how we've been operating in what I call the wounded masculine energy, especially in business for thousands of years. And why we're going to be, uh, and we're going to be talking about why it's imperative if we want to have the success and abundance we crave, if we want to feel good in our businesses, if we want to feel aligned with what we're doing, what we're offering to the world and how we do that, we have to shift more into the feminine archetype and at least try to do business and engage with money from that energy. This is why if you've taken, if you're like me, if you've taken a bunch of business courses and marketing courses and sales or manifesting courses, you've probably experienced that either they didn't really work for you the way that they seem to work for other people, or they work for a little while. And then you found yourself struggling again and like bumping up against the same issues again and again, falling back into old patterns where yet again, you're struggling with your business or you're struggling with money. And that's because pretty much everything we're taught about business and about money is taught from the perspective and in the energy of the wounded masculine. Honestly, this has become one of my favorite things to teach how to shift the energetics of our businesses and our energetics in how we do business, not only because I've seen how quickly women step into their power and their pleasure in their soul purpose work and how much better they feel in it uh, and how much more they start seeing easier success in doing it, but also because I know that the more we shift the energies of how we do business, the more lives we get to impact the more pain we get to help heal. And the more we actually get to change this world and heal this planet, which if you've listened to my other episodes, you might have heard me say that this is exactly why each of us is here. As souls on this planet, we came here to help bring in more healing and more love to this world. So empowering women to know how to tap into this feminine paradigm and find success on their terms in a way that feels like them, that feels like ease and like pleasure, to find the kind of success their soul wants to guide them to in service of their highest soul purpose has become one of my favorite things. And so I'm really excited to start sharing a little bit of these principles with you here today too. But before I keep going, I want to just quickly kind of do some housekeeping and let uh, make sure that you know how to reach out to me with your questions because I really love hearing from you. And also I do a giveaway every month where I give um, to, and to one woman who reaches out, I give uh, a free month of my membership, my inner circle membership to anybody who sends in a woman who sends in a question or an aha moment. So you could also win the giveaway just by sending in a message. So either head over to transformationtalkradio.com and send through a little message to me while I'm on the air. You can actually call to talk to someone as well, or you can message me directly and personally at heather-allison.com. And I still answer all of my own email. So send over your questions or your messages and you could win a free month of my Inner Circle membership where you can get personal attention from me and spot coaching and be around other women who are doing the same thing. Um, And the other thing is, before I drop into more content, this is something I like to do on every single one of my podcasts if you're starting to get familiar with these. We're going to take a minute here to just close our eyes and anchor into our bodies. And there's a reason I do this. When you listen to this show, when you listen to my podcast, my intention is that you receive an energetic transmission of this work that will actually help you start to awaken this ancient, these ancient principles, this ancient energy, this ancient wisdom within you. And in order to do that, you actually have to be listening a lot deeper than in your head. So we drop in together briefly just so that you can start listening from your body and start receiving the information down here rather than up in your head and your like linear and thinking mind. So obviously, please don't do this if you're driving or something like that. But everybody else, 
take a second here just to close your eyes. Get into a really comfortable seated position and close your eyes. Give yourself the gift of returning to this inner world, coming back from our busy lives, our busy physical and visual active lives and connect in here into these invisible realms inside and around us. And see if you can just feel or just intend for your awareness, for your conscious thought to start dropping down deeper, wafting down deeper into your body. You can imagine your breath starting to fall deeper and deeper with every inhale. You can imagine yourself as a traveler inside your own body, dropping down, maybe like in an elevator or down some steps, throw slowly through your midline. You can just imagine a line tracing all the way down the front of your body until you feel yourself deeper and anchored into your lower body. You can place a hand on your womb space or your lower belly. In fact, I would love it if you did. Go ahead and place your right hand on your womb space and just let yourself create the connection with this deeper part of your body. Part we really don't give much attention to. We tend to operate like toothpaste tubes squeezed up to the top of our energy systems operating from our heads and forgetting most of the time about the rest of our energy body. Either way, letting yourself drop all the way down to your hips, your pelvis, your sacral chakra. And just being here, breathing from here, softening here, creating expansion here. And notice how this feels. Notice how it feels different. And as you're down here, I want you to see if you can tap into what you know you're here for. You don't have to know your whole life's purpose, your whole soul purpose. But when you get down here, down to the deepest part of you, what do you feel you came here for? to this lifetime? What did you come here to experience, to share? What kind of essence did you come here into this lifetime to bring? Is it joy? Is it love? Is it freedom? Is it permission to fully be unabashedly you and show others they get to do the same? What is it for you? Maybe you receive a word here. Maybe you feel an emotion wash through you. Maybe you notice sensation in your body. Maybe a scene or a color drops into your imagination. Whatever it is for you, whatever shows up, whatever you imagine here is perfect. Just let yourself notice it. And if you find yourself popping back up to your head and getting caught up in what I call braining, (laughs) trying to figure out or make sense of what this might be for you, that's okay. It's totally normal. Remember, we've been conditioned to be up here for thousands of years. And just slowly and lovingly and with compassion, just let yourself drop back down. And take a few more breaths here breathing deep into your body and see if you can notice sensations that move through you as you do. And see if you can just let yourself have permission to know that this is why you're here. This super simple essence, this feeling, this gift. See if you can let yourself release the pressure for it to be anything other than it already is just for now. And last deep breath in here, inhaling all the way down to your sacral chakra and exhaling anything that wants to be released. And you can go ahead and open your eyes if you'd like, or you can always keep them closed as you continue to listen. And as always, see if you can just stay down in this lower part of your body as you listen today. Let yourself receive what I'm sharing with you rather than 
hear it and, and think about it in your head. <sighs> okay, so you have heard me say before on this podcast that we've really never been given permission to know what it feels like to do anything outside of the wounded masculine paradigm because that's all we've been raised to know. It's what we've been taught, right? Generation after generation. It's literally the only example we've been given. So we really don't even know that we're operating in this wounded energy all the time, that we're operating with only a fraction of our power, of our abilities, of our healing energy, of our wisdom, you name it. And we certainly don't know that it would be incredibly easier, feel incredibly better if we had access to our whole selves and our whole abilities. We actually feel that. We have a sense of it, but we don't really know it because it's kind of like if you've been raised in a city with like terrible air quality and pollution your whole life and you don't really even know any better, you don't know that there's any different out there because you've never been shown what it can feel like when you get to breathe fresh, crisp, healthy, clean air, right? It's not like that's your fault that you've never been shown that, but it makes every difference in the world and everything that you do when you finally get to breathe clean air, right? You'll be like, how did I never know that this was missing? And it's this way in all parts of our lives. You've heard me talk about this in our love lives last time. The whole wounded paradigm has impacted all parts of our lives as I've experienced it. And as my, as I've seen it in my clients, really anywhere we feel stuck or suffering, we're being affected by that polluted air, by that wounded archetypal patterning. But there's something extra funky about business and money, something extra funky about how the wounded uh, paradigm has impacted that. Things like sales and marketing and that kind of thing. And that's that business, at least the way it exists today, was literally built in the wounded paradigm. Unlike the other areas I coach and teach around, so love, uh, our intuition and connection with our soul, our emotional mastery and access to joy, our ability to find ease and flow and everything that we do, all of those things, all those things have been a part of our human experience for as long as we've been humans. They're just literally innate to who we are. They're a part of who we are. The business, the way it is now, was created after we decided to pretty much do away with our feminine archetypal energy and rely mostly on the masculine energy, which means it was literally born of the wound, right? So there's something especially profound about shifting the wounded energy patterns in our business, in, in how we show up in our business and how we think about our business and how we think about sales, about marketing, about money, about our sole purpose and what we're supposed to be doing with our lives. And that for me is why this work itself is so profound because what's happening right now is that it's changing. Whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, the landscape of business and the way we do business is shifting. And how we achieve success is shifting. How we feel in doing business is shifting. And how we're being required to interact with money is shifting. There is an emerging feminine paradigm of business. And it's basically requiring that we all get on board if we want to make it, at least in any way that feels good, at least in any way that's sustainable, because the old ways are no longer going to be working. I remember one of my um, previous mentors, one of my previous coaches telling me that she had gone to a huge conference with like the top marketers, the top earners and influencers in, in the like entrepreneurial realm. And she said the entire time, everyone was sitting around at this conference, not talking about their latest strategies and their latest successes and like the next way to like 10X your income, but about how none of the things they used to do are actually working anymore. And I can't even tell you how much I was like grinning to hear that because it was so confirming of everything that I'd been receiving intuitively about the business world and everything that I'd been experiencing myself in my own business. The things that led people to being successful in the past are not going to be the things that work anymore. What's going to be needed now is it's going to be imperative that your audience can feel something from you that they want to give you their business, not that they're pressured into it or scared into it. And it no longer needs to make sense to them why. And this is really big. And hold on, I need another drink. 
because this is really, really big. More and more people are moving away from things and people and services and companies and businesses that feel like they're squeezing them. And they're choosing things that feel good, that allow them to feel expansive and that they feel a resonance with, even if it doesn't make any sense. And that's super, super key. So I want you to hear that again. People are now choosing things and choosing how they spend their money more and more based on what feels resonant to them, even if it doesn't make any sense. Meaning if they just know that it's meant for them, they won't even hesitate. And what that means is your energy has to be aligned. It has to be authentic and it has to honor who they are and where they are in their journey. So the pushing and manipulating and squeezing people into sales or, or preying on their fears or scarcity or fear of missing out, that's all starting to not work the way it used to. But the cool part about all of that is shifting into this energy, into this emerging feminine paradigm of business is actually just as much about making it feel better for you as it is about making it feel better for your clientele, your audience, and being in alignment with this shift so things work better. Because I can tell you, oh my God, like as an entrepreneur myself, (laughs) it is the worst thing when we're trying to function and do business and find success when we're doing it from the wounded masculine. It honestly feels terrible. So see if you identify with any of this. This is literally like when you, when it seems like you can't make anything happen in your business, even if you're basically like killing yourself trying. (laughs) It seems like no clients are coming, like the money isn't coming, or when it does come, it goes right back out again because another big bill comes or whatever. It seems like you're spinning. Like it feels like you're always trying to keep up and catch up and always comparing yourself to other people or to what's new and what's next, right? It's when you're trying every process and every strategy that you see every other successful entrepreneur using. But like I said a minute ago, it's like either they don't seem to work for you or when they do work for a little while, you eventually just slip back into the same patterns again and get stuck all over again. So you keep searching for the next answer, the next expert, the next strategy, the next solution, the next class, right? Sound familiar? (laughs) Or it's when you feel like there's something beautiful within you, right? Something gorgeous within you, something purposeful within you that wants to be offered to this world, a gift, Even if you don't entirely know what that is, you just feel like you're supposed to be doing something bigger or more important, making more impact, doing something more meaningful, or at very least, you know, you're supposed to be like, you know, at least love the work that you do. And maybe you've dabbled in a bunch of things, like so many things, and you're so multi-passionate and you just keep not being able to kind of find that thing that feels like you, or maybe you do know what it is you're feeling called to do but you're not sure how to start doing it or how to start offering it, or you doubt that you have anything special enough to offer, like who am I to do this? Who am I to do something that big and that important, right? This is a big one for my clients. Or maybe you've been doing it. Maybe you've taken the leap and you're trying all the things, but it's so hard that you start wondering if it's actually meant for you after all, if that actually is your calling. And that last one, (laughs) that last one is so painful. I mean, they really are all painful because they come with this like really deep fear about what we're doing wrong or what's wrong with us or what it means about us. But that last one, reaching the point when you've taken the leap, when you've already said, okay, screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the chance. I know that this is what is calling me. I know that this is what's in my bones that I'm, I'm being asked to do. And then you have such a hard time that you start doubting the whole thing because it seems like it's not working. That feeling is so hard when you know in your bones with every fiber of your being that you're meant to be doing this work, that it's your soul calling and you start to wonder if you should give up. That's like soul death. That is so painful. And I've, I know that because I've been there. <laughs> I've been in all of those places and they're awful especially if you're like a soulful heart-led entrepreneur who really just wants to serve the collective and offer healing and, and make a difference and be able to make a living doing it, right? So many of you have been in that place and been ready to give up or have given up doing your soul's work because it feels so hard to compete or keep up 
with the way business is done or just feels really gross trying, right? Sales feels gross sometimes the way it's been taught to us. But here's the thing. Like I said, that's because business today has been entirely built on the masculine archetypal energy, the wounded masculine archetypal energy. That's literally all we've been taught. And that means nothing about what we've been taught is actually built for us to have success that feels good. Especially those of us who are meant to hold or carry more of the feminine archetypal energy. Business the way it is now was never built for our success. Every single template we were given for building our businesses, for calling in clients, for making or manifesting money, for marketing and sales and and creating our offers and prices uh, and packages and all of that stuff, for knowing what it was that uh, what it is that we're here to offer, for finding and embodying our power so that we can actually show up and do the thing that we're here to do, all of that, all of that that we've been taught how to do those things so far, it's all been built on the wounded masculine paradigm. But obviously, as I'm sharing with you today, that's not the only way. And it's absolutely truth that our businesses get to feel like a love story. It's one of my favorite things to share. So look at this. Just look at, the, at what we associate business with in the first place. We call it work. We call it work. It's what we call it. We, we call what we do in our businesses work. By its very name, it's set up to be hard <laughs> and like toiling and tiring and rigid, right? We have this connotation with it. It's destined to involve pushing toward a goal or an outcome, sticking with a fixed agenda, taking action after action after action in service of a to-do list and requirements and expectations, even if you're exhausted, even if they don't feel aligned, even if it doesn't feel good. There's nothing about business the way it's been built so far in this paradigm that says it's ever going to be about feeling good, but it's ever going to be about feeling fulfilled at a soul level, about following your heart. It's about getting stuff done, right? It's about meeting goals and checking things off to-do lists. Business today is literally all about head, about braining our way through life. And we worship business today. Success and money is all we seem to care about. And then we wonder why there's such an epidemic of unhappiness, why you can have money and all the success in in the world and still be unhappy. Fame even, right? And, And I honestly feel like we've kind of dubbed that as like the success. Fame is like the success, right? The biggest success we can have. And often it gains the most money as well. Look at how many people are miserable and suffering who are famous. They're poor, depressed, even suicidal, sadly, when it seems like by our current wounded masculine standards, like they have it all, right? This rigidity, this wounded masculine paradigm of success and money and business is literally killing us. And here's the craziest thing. We go about having those things, having success and money. We strive for those things so that we can get what? We chase success and money so we can get things like Love, happiness, freedom, beautiful lives, deep peace, self-love, really deep like soul fulfillment, like we like we're on purpose, right? Or maybe like so that we can just feel like we're we're doing the thing that we came here to do. We, like we can find passion for what we do, or maybe to help find, you know, um, make a, make a difference in this world, make the world a better place. Which means typically more depth and more connection, more love, more beauty in the world, right? Well, guess where all those things belong? (laughs) Guess where all those things come from? They come from the feminine archetype. All of those things come from the feminine archetype. Everything that we as humans tend to crave, everything that we are working so hard for, everything's found in the feminine archetype. And so how crazy are we to think that we can brain our way to those things? that we can push and drive and steer and control and work our way to those things. It's crazy. And this is one of those things that's like boggled my mind the most since starting to do this work and how how totally we have brainwashed ourselves into thinking that if we just masculine energy enough, if we just push enough and do enough, work enough, are perfect enough, build enough, that somehow we'll magically end up having everything we wish for that resides in the feminine energy. Well, it doesn't work that way. And that would be like 
like eating, like eating more and more and more pasta when you're really craving fruit (laughs) and thinking that like, if you just eat enough pasta, eventually it'll feel like fruit. Like that doesn't even sort of make sense. (laughs) And that's literally why this world is falling apart and literally why nothing we're trying is working. We're all fighting with like disease and unhappiness and unfulfilling lives and careers. It's why we're working ourselves to the bone and bleeding ourselves dry and fighting over money. Literally, the only way we're going to arrive at the things that we're craving, the things that we most deeply desire as humans, is if we bring in the feminine archetypal energy. And that includes in business. But we're so brainwashed into thinking that the only way we can make anything happen or find success or make money is if we keep pushing and pushing and going and doing in the masculine. And in fact, we're terrified of losing that grip. That's one of the things I see most in my clients. We have a really deep-seated fear that if we let go of any of the masculine, any of the masculine energy in their business, that they'll lose everything or that it'll fall apart. They'll lose control, right? And that's really one of the reasons why the wounded masculine archetype really kind of has us so deeply in its grip. We're so terrified of letting it go and stepping into more feminine. But of course, that's like, Partly also what's happened by being in the wounded masculine archetype because the primary energy of the wounded masculine is distrust. And so, of course, we don't trust that we can let go. Right? This is one of the reasons that it's so widely accepted that it's not appropriate to be emotional in the workplace or why we believe emotions have no place in business or why we think productivity, right? Like the doing is the only measure of our worth or why we often ignore our intuitive hunches in business if it all looks kosher on paper. As long as the numbers add up, we believe it, right? It's also why we've been stuck in a paradigm that values competition and comparison and working ourselves to the bone, feeling like we have to claw our way to success and like beat down our competition. It's why sales doesn't feel good to most people the way most people teach it. And why we instinctively feel repelled by the idea of a sales guy, right? Like, because it's always felt pushy and manipulative and sleazy and dishonest. It's why work just feels exhausting. Like we can, like, we feel like we can never rest, never breathe. Like we have to keep pushing if we want to make it. But here's what I've seen in my own business and the businesses of every single one of my clients. When we're really deep in struggle in our businesses, when it's just feeling like it's not working, when the clients aren't coming in, when the money isn't coming in, when we're having a hard time and wondering why it just doesn't seem to be working. What's happening is we're holding on too tight to either the way we're doing things, to the process or the template we believe we should be working in, or to a specific outcome, a specific goal, a specific number or to the idea that hard work is the only way we're going to make it, that we can't let ourselves rest, that we have to keep pushing. And inevitably, every single time, even if we believe it's going to cause us to fail, that everything's going to fall apart if we let go, it is always when we soften that grip and let ourselves open to other possibility, other meaning, another way, opening to feminine energies like play and curiosity, and like creating spaciousness and rest and ease and allowing it to feel like pleasure, that it opens everything up. It opens the channel. We finally get to receive what we've been struggling to achieve. I still go through phases of this once in a while when I forget all the things that I teach and I start pushing and pushing and pushing on my business where it's like, like I literally sit down behind my computer first thing in the morning instead of giving myself time to connect and have spaciousness and take care of me first and see what wants to be done today. And deprioritizing things like my pleasure and my morning meditation practice and my body and checking in with my intuition and just allowing myself to follow how things feel. It never fails. (laughs) It never fails that I get a swift kick in the butt somehow, or I get squeezed by my soul really uncomfortably, or I get so frustrated by what I'm trying to create that seems like it's not happening or not working, where I'm like furrowing my brow constantly or like feeling like crap about what I'm doing or feeling insecure, just feeling gross and crunchy about everything. Basically, I end up having what I call a human tantrum and throwing a little fit. (laughs) And then I remember 
oh, right, I haven't been doing my spiritual practice. Oh, right, I've been prioritizing uh, doing instead of feeling and being in my self-care. Oh, right, I've been doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing instead of what actually feels aligned for me, what actually feels good. I've been prioritizing the masculine instead of the feminine. It literally never fails when I'm struggling in my business at all. I realize that I'm holding on too tightly to something, pushing too hard, trying to control things, basically operating in that wounded masculine archetypal energy. And the second I come back into my center, into my feminine energy practices, it all shifts. It all opens up. Everything starts happening in my business the way I wish it had been so much more easily, so much more fluidly. It's when it starts feeling like magic. It starts feeling like that flow, like, right? Like, like I barely have to lift a finger and everything I do take action on actually finally starts feeling so much better. So here's what I would love for you to try. Wherever you're struggling in your business or around money, those places where you're worrying or feeling stress or furrowing your brow or just feeling like heavy around these things, I want you to ask yourself where you're holding on too tight. Where are you holding on too tight? Are you pushing so hard for one specific outcome, for one specific goal? Are you so attached to one way of doing things? Identify that for yourself. Where are you creating narrowness by being so attached and holding on too tight? Where are you or what are you overly attached to. And then I want you to feel into how else could it go? And here's a hint. There are literally a bajillion infinite ways (laughs) that it could go. So if you think there's only one way, that's just an invitation. It's just a symptom of the narrowing of the energy. So it's just an invitation to go bigger and get creative. So how else could it go? And think about how else it could go and why that would actually be beautiful. Why would that actually be beautiful? Why might that actually be in your benefit if it went that way? That can sometimes feel hard to tap into, but there's a really beautiful opening that happens when you find it. If you're trying to make something happen, you're trying to make money and it's not happening or it's not happening the way you want it to, also feel into what else you can try. How can you get creative? And how can you inject a little bit of play into the process? And the other thing is, and I cannot stress this one enough, create a 20-minute morning meditation practice before you do anything else in your day. One thing about the masculine archetype is that it's very external facing, which means this is where we get things like comparison and competition and taking on how other people are doing things, living by other people's or living for other people's expectations, giving away our time. Uh, operating out of fear of judgment, giving away our energy, our power, doing, 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 doing for everyone else. And think about that. The second you step into your business role, you are literally doing four external things and people constantly for the rest of your day, right? So if you start your day with 20 minutes for you, you are energetically, physically, emotionally, symbolically, and otherwise putting yourself first. And when you give yourself the gift of that connection to yourself, even for just 20 minutes, and I know you can find 20 minutes. If you can't, that's another something else to look at. You will go the rest of your day more connected to how you feel, more connected to your center, to your own inner knowing, your own intuition, and to your body. And this is huge. And it's a huge and really, really simple way to start letting the feminine archetype awaken in your life and in your business. On our next episode, we're going to dive into how these archetypal energies impact our ability to connect to our intuition. We all have intuitive abilities, literally every single one of us. But again, one of the side effects of the over-masculinized world we've been living in is that we've all forgotten this. We've all forgotten how to access it. We've basically effectively turned it off. 
but we all have intuition and we all have a really rich connection to our intuition. I can't tell you how many times I've had women show up and join my, typically it's my longest program, my uh, golden goddess program, but they'll show up sometimes thinking they're not very intuitive or thinking like they don't have access to their intuition. And within like a few months, they're literally getting so many deep downloads and they're like shocked by what's opened up for them. So you have this within you. And again, it's, it's returning to the feminine archetypal energy that allows us to open that channel again. But for now, I want to thank you for being here, for listening, for letting yourself receive this information and these teachings. Head over to heather-allison.com. Check out all the courses and information there for you. There's something there for every budget uh, and for every, every topic, whether it's love or intuition or business or just feeling better in your own life. Again, a reminder, send me your questions or your messages about what you learned here today so you can be entered to win a free month of my Inner Circle membership and get some free support for me for a month. And I will see you here again next time. Have a great week, everybody, and I will see you back here again soon.